Cenobic? Yes. Oh, wow, well, okay, I got that. All right. Uh, how are you doing today? I'm, I wish I was doing warmer. It's really cold in Maryland. <laughs> oh, I got your resume here. Uh, looks cool. Just want to kind of talk about your, uh, your Salesforce experience and try to ascertain uh, where you are in your development journey. Um, um, so just kind of want to talk about your Salesforce experience. So, um, so you, you have this uh, MBA from uh, UVA and, um, and uh, so you do pretty well. How did you get into Salesforce? Yeah, by uh, by accident. It was a fortunate accident. And initially, I was when I went for business school, I wanted to work at companies like McKinsey, BCG, Bain, become a management consultant, become have a prestigious job, have the dream Salesforce, have the dream MBA job. But I wasn't able to get a job, and so I was recruiting, recruiting, and I got a job. At I was in a leadership track, and I uh, I um, was helping the sales team sell more. I was supposed to help them. How can we increase productivity? How can we increase user adoption of Salesforce? So I'm like, what is a Salesforce? Never heard of this. How can? And I started researching, learning myself, and and then I started uh, sharing my knowledge with the sales team, and they started really liking what I explained them. That no one has really gone out and talked to them and help them appreciate Salesforce more. And so I really liked the feedback I was getting and I thought maybe I should change my career track. And I talked to some people, did my research and re decided to become a Salesforce developer. I mean, decided to become a Salesforce professional initially, just like, uh, and, then and then I joined the Salesforce development team a few months later. And mm -hmm. so now I feel like I'm doing much better than my, 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 my classmates who became management consultants, I think this is a much better career track than being a management consultant. Okay, cool. That's, a, that's one of those Salesforce success stories. Uh, that, that's how I feel like every day. Yeah, okay. So tell me about your, your Salesforce experience, your development chops. Um, so um, when you work at it, what kind of things did you work on? Uh, we, you know, we, can, we can group these up into really broad categories we can look at. You know, configuration, we can look at development, um, so Apex and um, Lightning, Apex, Visual Force, uh, RI, Lightning Web Components, you know, that's one side of the track, and then there's the other side of just basically pure configuration. Um, so it looks like you've done a little bit of both. Yeah, yeah. I started out, I started doing a lot of configuration type of work, very basic uh, it was my, uh, yep, yep, uh, basic, very basic development. Uh, and where did, when did you start uh, doing your, uh, getting into uh, development? Yeah, I started at, at, but it was limited, very limited, very basic things, and uh, at, it was much more, and right now it, it's, it's like a lot. Okay, so is this a lot? What, what kind of stuff are you doing? So you do doing web components and Aura components? Now uh, we don't do Aura components, and by my, but I just do, started doing LWC recently, about just two months ago. Uh, I, I'm, I'm I was fixing a bug in in the way the error message is, is rendered. It oh. was not consistent with how error messages are rendered in our other LWCs. So I, I did the fix. Now I'm writing a unit test for the JavaScript that the LWC has. So I'm trying. I'm figuring out how to use Jest, this this uh, test framework. So, so I'm I'm pretty new to LWC. I would say, yeah, very new. But with Apex, I'm very comfortable with Apex. Tell me about your Apex skills. I fix bugs. Uh, I, I I make improvements. I refactor our code so that it's enterprise ready. We have to abide by governor limits, uh, different governor limits. Yeah, mm -hmm. like the DML rows. You can insert in a single single Apex transaction with heap size limit, uh, which is like 12 megabytes. Um, so we, in order to overcome these, uh, we uh, we have to change it from the synchronous to asynchronous, and uh, we can do that by either using the Kubel or we can do the batch jobs. So, what are some of the best practices when writing? Generally, best practices that come to mind. When I say best practices, 
When I say best practices at Apex, what comes to mind for you? The code has to be easy to read. It has to be maintainable so that another developer can understand. The best way to make it understandable is methods should do just one thing. And the name of the method should be should explain what it does. And uh, I think it should avoid putting in like comments into the code. The method name and the just reading the code should be self self explanatory. Uh, but if it's unavoidable, unavoidable, adding comments is good. So that's the first thing. Yeah, there's the readability. The second thing is we should write unit tests to make sure that the logic, the, met, the logic in the method actually works. So we have to use system asserts for that. In the unit test. Um, so that's two. The third one. The third one I would say is yeah, it has to be bulkified the code. Yeah, it's the, if you if you have a trigger, you have to pass in all the values in the trigger that you're processing all the code like effectively, so you can do four circle loops. All right. Uh, and, and when you write your triggers, do you have any? Uh, do you use any kind of uh, patterns when you write those? Um, are you writing um, writing handlers and, and interpreting methods and helper methods, or do you put everything on the trigger? No, nothing in the trigger. No logic in the trigger. The log the trigger is just a like a sign saying turn right, turn left, stop. So you just have to control the before insert, like the context, and then in which context what method is executed. Okay. All right. And how about um, on? Okay, so. Now you've gotten into uh, LWC. Tell me about that. If you had to teach LWC to me, how would you explain it? How would you teach it? Uh, where would you start? Explain the different components um, and, and tell me how those components interrelate. So Apex is working with the database, yeah? We can pull up records from the database. We can do some manipulation with them, update them, delete them. So that's the back end. LWC is about the front end. How do you display the information to the users? Yes. Page layouts are standard out of the box. But what if you want to create something new? You want to arrange things differently. And uh, previously we could use Visual Force, uh, but now Salesforce is adopting LWC for the almost a year now, I think. So uh, in LWC, the essential parts are the HTML, which is like the framework like holding things together. The JavaScript is the logic. Uh, when you, how did, what kind of data does it display, the HTML? Mm -hmm. um, and then you have also have CSS, which adds coloring, uh, width, etc. like making making it look pretty. And, mm -hmm. then, and then you also have, um, uh, you can also have the, the unit test for the JavaScript and, and uh, the JavaScript makes make sure that the the unit test just make sure that the just like an Apex unit test same idea yeah and uh, and also you can have like sample data for the unit test that it loads and so I would suggest that if you want to learn LWC you 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 do the trailhead and uh, they're very nice tutorials also there's a LWC recipes it's like a gallery of LWC uh, LWC projects, about 10 of them, that you can just play around and see how they work. You can see the power of LWC. Okay. Um, have you done any R at all? I did it when I was... I don't remember right now. Okay, if you had to uh, jump in and maintain some R code, do you feel like you could do it? Yeah, I remember one thing I really liked about Aura is that you can open it from developer console. It's yeah. it's all there, right? LWC cannot. You have to use IntelliJ or Visual Studio Code. So with what? So yeah, I can. You can use this console dot log, or you can open up the you can up the inspector and see the messages. Um, yeah, just some of the uh, we have some. Um, Older components that are written written in the uh, R. Mm. <clears throat> so you know sometimes you have to get in and update those. I mean, I, I think I would know, but I I would first have to see the error message, see what it is. Is it and that would that would tell me how I should tackle. Maybe it's not able to access the Salesforce, or is it just not finding something? Uh, and I would 
I would, yeah, I think like. Tell me about um, in writing Alma BC. Let me go back to Alma BC. In writing this, tell me like the most um, complex component that you've written. Yeah, I haven't written the LWC component from scratch. Uh, I have fixed bug, uh, and I'm right now. Yeah, I'm, that's what I've I've done three four things with LWC, and that's fixing bugs. Okay. So. And what's the most complex bug that you fixed? So the first complex bug is probably the first one. It was the fir first time like getting my hands around LWC yeah. and just trying to understand it. And what kind of bug did you uh, have? It was the error message was not displaying correctly. It was not the standard error message that we want. It was it wasn't aligning with our standard error messages. So I had to make it consistent. So. Okay. That was the first one, but then once once I fix that, some other problems started coming up. So I'm fixing those, and those are with the unit tests. The unit tests broke, so I'm I'm, I'm I will, I will, that's what I'm working on right now. Okay. Uh, let's see. And then um, you're on the apex side. Tell me about the most complex apex code that you can remember writing. The most complex apex was at here. Uh, we we were having Einstein bot, and the Einstein bot was for a bank, and it would like generate income statement. It would allow a user to create a, to generate a credit card, or you can. So that was a new technology. There was no documentation, and I was also very fresh with. Apex very little very little experience just like okay. one and a half two years of experience at that time and uh, it was very challenging for me. Okay, how did you get around that? How did, what, what did you do to uh, to complete your task? I had to persevere. I had to just a lot of trial and error, a lot of googling, but that, sometimes that didn't help because it's, it's new technology wasn't was not generally available, so it was just a lot of trial and error, long hours, very long hours. And uh, there's nothing special I did. I just had to exp experiment. Okay. Um, on the configuration side, oh, you say you're uh, familiar with Lightning Cloud, right? Just familiar. Familiar. Okay. With, yeah. Yeah, we don't use them at work. I haven't used them professionally. I just did it for myself. I helped a colleague create a simple Lightning Flow. Uh, and so the, the, I've done Lightning Flow, but not on a, for, not commercially, just. Okay, I understand. And then, um, like process builders, anything like that. Yeah, we. I, I help colleagues set up. I, I, I So I'm like the sales, Salesforce, uh, SME here, and so a lot of people come to me with the questions, and I guide them. And those are very easy things, and I just help the co colleagues set up a process builder for a customer. So. So yeah, I'm very comfortable with all this uh, process builder workflow, uh, lightning flow, not so much. I just, because I didn't have a need to create something complex, but that's one of the things I want to do more is we should we should uh, embrace lightning flows and use that more instead of just pure code, pure Apex. Yeah, so how could you, um, how, how would you do that if you were coming in and, and um, making recommendations for folks? How would you use the configuration side more? So there are two things come to my mind. If we are doing from scratch, we have to evaluate what can we do with lightning flow? The same thing. If we can, maybe we should try it. One of the challenges though with lightning flows, I feel is that like if you want to add some lo logic to the trigger, you just add a new line to the trigger and then add the logic to the class. Mm -hmm. I, so with lightning flows, I feel it's, I haven't done like complex lightning flows. I don't know how that would, that would be, how debugging is, and how can how complex can you do on lightning flows? But it, it looks really cool. I've I've watched the videos, I've studied them, but I haven't implemented on the project for a customer or for ourselves in that. As for the possibility, I think it's that's much easier. We can make we should make our Apex classes in invocable from process builders so that the customers can use our uh, global classes without without Apex. Yeah, they can just use process builder and do whatever they want mm -hmm. with that local method. I think we should we should look into that. 
So, so those are some of the um, advantages of process billing. What, what are some of the reasons why, say, you wouldn't use say, something like process builder? Mm, why you wouldn't use process builder? So people say it's very SOCO intensive, it's inefficient, but I haven't, I haven't faced that issue. Um, so for me, any reason why I would not use Process Builder? Oh, outbound message. You cannot send out outbound messages, I think, with Process Builder. You cannot delete records. You cannot. You can only access the record that from Process Builder, you can only access related records mm -hmm. uh, yeah. to the record that generated the Process yeah, Builder. Yeah. Yeah, I think generally, um, uh, when you have to do like uh, before trigger work as well, Process Builder mm -hmm. is a very, uh, Process Builder always runs after the after trigger. Oh, oh, FSL. So you, yeah, you say you scale with the Einstein bot, live message, live agent, FSL. Now, what kind of FSL, what did you do with FSL? Yeah, I remember I did something, but I don't remember right now what. I think it was when we had the... Uh, it was some kind of, we, we did something for people. When, like, some kind of technicians go in the field, then they can submit expenses or something. And then we would, oh, okay, I get it now. We, we did a project for some city. We were trying to win a bid, municipal bid, and we wanted uh, municipal employees, like field employees, when they see some trash on the street, they, just, they take a picture and then send it in or something. Or we can, we can see where people are on the map and who is working right now, who has what shift, and you can see, like, see who is, whose shift is coming up. And yeah, but I'm forgetting the de details. Right, and, and, um, uh, so, uh, and what were you doing with um, Einstein? Einstein was was very interesting because it was the first time I was working with chat chatbot. So we're trying to, and it was just coming out. Einstein bot was not live yet, so we had we had direct access to the development team, and we were looking for like some good use cases that we can sell. And the good use case was for banks. Like right now, uh, Bank of America has this Emma thing. So we, we were trying to do something same with, with Einstein bot. So you can check your credit score. You can uh, see, your, see your balance. You, you can uh, check balance in different accounts. You can uh, like add family members to your account. So very basic things you, that you can do with other chatbots. But for Einstein bot, it was totally new and was revolutionary. and. My manager later showcased it at Dreamforce. Okay. So, what are you looking for out of your career? Yeah. So you got in the task force today, and you've got this great MBA. So, where are you looking to go? What are you looking to do? What do you want to become when you grow up? Yeah, I want to, when I turn 45, 50, I want to have minimum regrets that I didn't use my years to the best. And I would like to work on exciting projects, I would like to have impact. I would like to become a Salesforce MVP, uh, technical architect, and, and uh, so. Oh, you want to have you looking for a technical um, career path? Yes, yes, because I feel like technical people are the real problem solvers. They have impact. They have value. They generate a lot of value, and I would, that's what I want to do: is generate a lot of value for customers, for companies. And I think, although I don't have technical like undergrad, but I think I've become pretty comfortable with it. And I'm, my learning curve is really fast, yeah? I'm improving really, really fast, yeah? And the benefit I can add is that I think I can communicate well with end customers, with the teams, understand their needs, and and make sure that there is no miscommunication. There was a lot of miscommunication between the end customers and the development team. And so they would have projects that didn't, they didn't really benefit the end users. And so that's why we had a lot of salespeople who are supposed to use Salesforce, but they don't, they don't really use it. They, they, really, they don't like it. And that's, that's the kind of projects I want to prevent from happening. Yeah, gotcha.